So, Brian, talk to us about how you got started with open storage and the next center. Well, uh, a coworker of mine actually introduced me to ZFS, uh, you know, some publications and reading material on it. And I was really excited about the manageability features and the, you know, the in-kernel um, export uh, configurations that were possible, like SIFS or iSCSI or NFS. So I thought, uh, well, gosh, you know, it's easy enough to give it a try. So with OpenSolaris, I installed it on a test server. It was just a little, you know, mirrored RAID type of um, situation. And, and I actually got some experience with it. You know, I created um, extra file systems, used snapshots, tried replication, balls, all that. And it was, it was extremely viable just as a test. I even got good performance out of a relatively modest machine. So um, after that, I made a pitch to, to you know, go full scale and actually build a proper SAN with it. Um, and that, that went well, it was open Solaris. And in fact, that particular system is still in production today and it's had many upgrades, I'm trying to phase it out for Nexenta. Um, because it, you know Oracle bought Sun and so Open Solaris dried up and I followed the Illumos project and the uh, Open Indiana projects um, but I needed a clear support path so uh, Nick Center was a clear choice for that. Great and uh, I know you're a big fan of no vendor lock-in almost to the extent that you feel it's allergic to have window lock-in in your infrastructure. Can you expand on that, on you know, some of the advantages of going to open storage and how you can avoid window lock-in by a solution like Nexenta? Well, uh, that's an issue pretty close to my heart, actually, because it, the, the previous high-performance SAN we had was an EMC system, and it was out of warranty. So, uh, you know, upgrading the disk drive, we had to get the proprietary, proprietary SAS drives from EMC, um, with the special firmware, even though they were just a regular SAS drive, so it's just that sort of lock-in, you know, to the point where it's just egregious. I mean, I'm sure EMC can make a case that they did lots of testing and whatnot, and that's true, but for the size of my deployment and my budgetary needs, that wasn't good. So, um, that's just one example of why I don't like to be locked in. Um, and there's many others, you know, I don't exclusively use Windows or exclusively Linux. If there's a technology that's a good fit for what I need to solve, then I'm going to use it. I'll, I'll use an Intel processor and I'll use an AMD processor or Unix or Linux where it's appropriate. So, and by being locked into a particular vendor, suddenly interoperability issues are, are everywhere. So, great, thank you. Um, in our conversation, you talked about how your company has adopted virtualization in mass almost to the point you have 300 virtual machines that you have to manage today. How has open storage benefited you as a sysadmin in your virtualization project? Well, there's a few ways. Um, I do have to admit that while there are 300 virtual machines you know, in my deployment, not all of them are online, about 80 of them are offline right now, and only about 80 of them are production, but they're all important. It's all important that they're all there. And so, strictly in the sense of I've got 300 VMs that I need to store and have at the ready. So they're not all online right now, but that's just, you know, fair disclosure. Um, sorry, I forgot what you asked. <laughs> we were just talking about, that's okay, we were just talking about virtualization. Is there any particular open storage benefit you would see in, oh. the, in that, in that uh, environment? Right. <laughs> Uh, the benefits of open storage, of course, uh, in virtualization is, you know, I've got all these crazy VMs everywhere. Um, and when it comes time to need more storage, uh, I don't have to do anything crazy like a re rebuild or resizing of a file system. I can put in the drives, I can actually go into the Nexenta GUI and say, use these drives, put them in a mirror pair and attach them as another, uh, you know, volume. And so if I'm using NFS for my VM storage, it's immediately available. If I'm using iSCSI, it's very easy to grow the iSCSI Zvol and then have my VM storage realize that it has grown. I mean, I can do this all in minutes. And I can do it safely in the middle of the day. It's, it's not like um, another SAN where I have to take things offline to upgrade the capacity. So I, I have done this in the middle of the day. Uh, you know, a few months ago, I, I popped in an SSD for hybrid, uh, hybrid storage, you know, read IOPS, and my users immediately benefited. And that was excellent. At noon during lunchtime. Great. So let's talk about hybrid storage and SSD devices. 
um, you know, open storage in Accenta is a big proponent of supporting hybrid storage natively from our product. So can you talk to us about how you feel the importance of hybrid storage in your environment and Nexenta's capability to support those? What are some of the benefits that you have reaped? Well, it's, it's I think, critical um, because I can put dollars where it makes sense. If I need IOs per second, I can get a device that does that efficiently. If I need read IOs, I get an SSD that's MLC cache, it's not expensive, does that particular job very well. If I need raw storage, I add more you know, spinning rust. Um, and I can use, because I can accelerate the read IOPS, I can use you know, 7200 RPM. I can save energy and just flat out noise, honestly, uh, in the data center by using these lower speed drives without having to worry about performance too much. Except, of course, when the caches are cold and I have that, perform uh, that performance cliff. Um, but that's just read and storage. I can also do writes. I'm using Chris George's DDR drive and that is excellent for accelerating NFS or any synchronous write operation. It's perfectly targeted you know, to, to what I need. So I've got all these options. Uh, I've used uh, Intel SLC uh, SSDs for write acceleration in other boxes, and that's worked fine too. Um, my need for it was slightly lighter, so I could get away with the, uh, the different device. So this, this kind of flexibility is just it's key to me. Great, awesome. To summarize our chat here, Braden, if you were to list down the top three benefits from your company's perspective um, based on your decision to go with open storage, what would those be? If someone were to ask you, okay, Braden, can you just list us the top three benefits of open storage, what would those be? Well, it, number one, I think, is the, the sheer number of ways I can get the, the storage to the application or server that needs it. Uh, I use iSCSI, for instance, for my Windows systems. Uh, I use SIFs for my users. Uh, their home drives are my documents, or folder redirected to that, and it works great. Uh, and then my Linux VMs often use iSCSI or NFS. So just having that all in one box uh, is important, especially in terms of Active Directory integration. I mean, I'm running Windows network for the workstations. And being able to use the SIFs with Active Directory integration is a must-have. It's not optional. It's, it's uh, a deal-breaker if it's not present. Great. Uh, oh, number two. Um, with the manageability, it, it saves me a lot of time. Like I mentioned, um, you know, I can do an upgrade online in a few minutes. Uh, I can provision new file systems. I can set up a new iSCSI target or a new SIF share, and it's not a big deal. It's just alter the management interface or the command line. It works well. And number three, ultimately, um, I have to be able to get my expenditures on storage approved by finance. You know, it's just how it is. And being able to to target what I need, I don't have to say. I need to buy a dozen hard drives to get the IOPS I need for my users to have a performance experience. I can just buy the SSDs uh, so I can save a lot of money there. So that makes them happy because I'm more likely to get the dollars approved. It's good for everyone. Great. Brayden, really appreciate you stopping by and having a kind of conversation. I hope you're enjoying the conference. And uh, we are looking forward to your presentation as well in the breakout sessions tomorrow. Thank yeah. you. Thanks a lot. All right.